Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Coronavirus Booster for the week of March 29th, 2021. My name is Anika Gianforti, and I will be bringing you this week's update. So let's start off by looking at the numbers. Over the past week, there has been about a 15% increase in cases per day compared to the average two weeks ago. So new cases, test positivity rates, and hospitalizations are creeping upward, and the fear is that deaths will follow this trend. So we want to make sure that even though we've had a really nice downward trend, that we're not tripping near this finish line. So this trend is concurrent with you know, St. Patrick's Day celebrations and that spring itch to get outside and see people. And the fact that we do now have people taking vaccines and there's this inherent feeling that there's light at the end of the tunnel, which is uplifting, but we need to be careful not to, again, trip just before crossing that finish line. So with Easter just around the corner, we should keep mitigation and social distancing in mind. Now, according to the CDC, if you've been fully vaccinated, you can gather indoors with other fully vaccinated people without masks, or you can gather with unvaccinated people from one other household without masks, as long as those individuals don't uh, have or live with anyone who is at an increased risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Um, so make sure that you use caution going forward, especially as we get into that Easter, Easter holiday. And along those same lines, we should still avoid medium or large gatherings and practice social distancing and wearing those face coverings in public or where there are gatherings of unvaccinated people from multiple households and places. So make sure that we're not letting down our, our guard there um, to encourage uh, getting towards the end of this pandemic and curbing that case count down again. So in, in brighter news, let's look at vaccinations. Right now, about two and a half million vaccines per day are being given. And Saturday, a record 3.49 million doses were administered. So that's great news. And this all adds up to about 15 and a half percent of the total US population being fully vaccinated currently. And even better news, most states are planning on opening vaccine eligibility by late April or May. Um, but this means that employers should prepare for their employees to be getting vaccinated if they have not been doing so already. So what, what would that look like from an employer standpoint? Well, there are several things to consider. So one thing is certainly, have you been communicating with your employees already about the vaccine? So have you been encouraging vaccination for your employees? Have you um, determined whether or not your employees are eligible? So this may also involve communicating um, for, for states that have a staggered rollout where maybe your, your workforce category isn't open, but maybe a lot of your employees might have pre-existing conditions that would make them eligible for a vaccine already. Um, you can encourage them to get that vaccine as of now if they are um, applicable in some other way, whether it be by age or that pre-existing condition. Make sure you answer any questions that they have. So the first step there is figuring out what are their questions and is there any vaccine hesitancy? If there are questions or if there is hesitancy, figure out what those questions are and then figure out why are folks hesitant about the vaccine? You know, is it something simple that can be communicated? Um, there may be times where no matter what, you're just not going to be able to convince a person that a vaccine is right at this time, um, and that's okay. But where there's wiggle room, we should, um, you know, focus on educating employees on um, the benefits of getting vaccinated. Also, communicating where they can get vaccinated currently, and um, when the time comes where they will be able to get vaccinated. And then there's also the option of incentivizing vaccinations, and this could look like you know, general encouragement, or maybe there's a raffle. So if you get vaccinated, you are able to, um, you know, submit for um, a day's paid time off or, you know, something else. It could be a prize or it could be a monetary incentive, whatever the case may be. So work on that with your management teams to make sure that you're uh, preparing properly. And then there's also best practices to consider. And again, these can oftentimes be communicated 
uh, ahead of time, even before you're eligible for the vaccine as a workforce. So an example here is offering paid time off for employees who are vaccinated and or if they have vaccine side effects, especially after that second shot. So, you know, we have been hearing that, you know, 24 to 48 hours after the vaccine, you may end up with some fevers, chills, fatigue. Consider paid time off in the case that um, folks do have those vaccine side effects because it's still worth them getting the vaccine. Overall, from a big picture standpoint, it's better for your organization and can lead to more downtime in the future, right? We don't want our, our workforce to become sick with COVID-19. And then allow time for vaccine confidence to grow. So there may be employees who are hesitant at first, but once they see um, friends, family, and other coworkers become vaccinated, um, they may be more open to, to becoming vaccinated as well. So offer multiple opportunities for vaccination. And this is going to look different depending on um, your size and scale of business, the state you're in and where you're at, but there's some options for vaccine clinics. So you may be in a situation where um, your employees are using existing community locations to become vaccinated. And in that case, again, paid leave is a good option and maybe folks need transportation support. So if that's something you can provide, that makes it easier for your employees to get that vaccination. So consider that. In a lot of cases, um, there may be opportunities for you to coordinate with local health officials and industry organizations to provide things like mobile vaccination clinics. Um, so make sure if that's an option for you that if possible, you know, allow that mobile clinic um, to um, come back a couple different times so that you allow time for that vaccine confidence to grow and maybe folks will be interested the second time that clinic is able to come around. Other things to consider, um, there's a, a great resource on the CDC webpage about the COVID-19 workplace vaccination program. So I encourage you to look at that where they talk a little bit more about potentially staggering um, doses for your employees in case they need that 24, 48 hour window um, to, to recover from that second dose in particular. Um, so make sure you take a look at that and just evaluate your resources. And I would certainly encourage any organization or any individual facility to coordinate with their um, industry organizations that they're a part of and also their local health department. Because if you can do a lot of preparation up front, it will help you in the long run with that vaccination rollout. And again, make sure that you're communicating with your employees. So the overall message of this booster is to certainly keep practice social distancing, wearing those face coverings and regularly washing your hands. I know that um, it's very tempting, especially with the, the nice weather, particularly here in the Northeast, um, that we get out and be social again. And it's been a year of this pandemic, but we're so close and we see the light at the end of the tunnel. So we really want to make sure that that we get through this and don't drag it on longer than necessary. Um, so encourage vaccinations, stay safe and follow those protocols.